In this video, we will discuss the pathology of lichen sclerosis and lichen simplex chronicus. Both of these are known neoplastic epithelial disorders of vulva. You know, vulva is a part of female reproductive tract that is externally visible. And this lichen sclerosis and lichen simplex chronicus are the known neoplastic disorders of the vulva. So let's start with the lichen sclerosis. So lichen sclerosis in its basic definition is immune mediated fibroinflammatory condition of the vulvar skin. So this definition tells us two points. First that this lichen sclerosis is immune mediated. So the cells of immunity arrive at the level of this vulva and what do they do? They induce fibroinflammatory state. So these lymphocytes that are the cells of immune system destroy or damage the skin of the vulva resulting in inflammation and this long term inflammation can develop into the fibrous tissue. So lichen sclerosis is immune mediated fibroinflammatory condition of vulvar skin and what is its etiology obviously it is considered to be autoimmune and what is the pathogenesis so it is actually a cell mediated immune response cell mediated means that it is not in response by lymphocytes by b lymphocytes rather it is by t lymphocytes that are the cell mediated immunity cells so this T lymphocytes arrive at the vulva and they cause degenerative changes in the epidermis. So epidermis of the vulva is degenerated and as a response it results in superficial dermal fibrosis. So what are the clinical features or the gross appearance of lichen sclerosis? So first of all you need to know that lichen sclerosis most commonly affects postmenopausal and prepubertal women. So it does not usually affect the women of reproductive age. It uh, it occurs after the age of reproduction that is postmenopausal or before the reproductive age that is prepubertal. And how about is the gross appearance? It appears as a leukoplakia or papules. Leukoplakia are white colored patches or plaques. So they, these appear as leukoplakia and sometimes the labia, labia majora and labia minora may become atrophic. Why they become atrophic? Because the inflammation is resulting in the degenerative changes in epidermis so the labia may become atrophic and sometimes they become fibrosed why they become fibrosed because the chronic inflammation results in fibrosis and when the labia become fibrous the vaginal orifice may become narrowed so these are the gross appearance or clinical features and the point to understand is whether this lichen sclerosis is benign or malignant Remember that this lichen sclerosis is benign in itself, which means that it usually doesn't progress to cancer, but few women may develop squamous cell carcinoma. Now why this is so? You know that we studied in our principles of general pathology that chronic inflammation is an enabler of malignancy. This means that if there is chronic inflammation in an environment, then this chronic inflammation causes damage and release of some growth factor like things that can increase the chances of neoplasia so simply so similarly lichen sclerosis can increase the chances of development of carcinoma but itself it is not malignant it is benign now let's discuss the microscopic features of lichen sclerosis so as we just studied its pathogenesis the keywords to remember for the microscopic features are similar inflammatory cells cause degeneration of epidermis and then fibrosis so first keyword is inflammatory cells. So you will see band like mononuclear inflammatory cells infiltrate. Why mononuclear? Because I said that it is mediated by cell mediated immunity that is T lymphocytes. And these T lymphocytes like all other lymphocytes are mononuclear. So you will see band like mononuclear inflammatory cells infiltrate as you can see here. Then you will see degeneration of epidermis. This degeneration of epidermis will be visible as thinning of epidermis. So the layer of epidermis will appear thin as compared to the usual and there is disappearance of retipex what do we mean by these retipex so actually the epidermis of skin shows some invaginations into the underlying connective tissue or underlying dermis these projections are known as retipex and in lichen sclerosis as this region as this epidermis is being degenerated so there is loss of these retipex you know that you will see that there are no such invaginations so you will see thinning of epidermis and disappearance of retipex and the third keyword is fibrosis so you will see zone of acellular dermal fibrosis as you can see here there is a lot of fibrous tissue and the cells 
in the connective tissue are not visible. So this is zone of acellular dermal fibrosis. So remember the three cardinal features of lichen sclerosis. You will see band like mononuclear inflammatory cells. You will see thinning of epidermis with disappearance of retipex. And you will see zone of acellular dermal fibrosis. Now let's discuss our second disorder that is lichen simplex chronicus. So lichen simplex chronicus is defined as chronic dermatitis characterized by thickened and hyperkeratotic skin resulting from chronic rubbing or scratching. So there are two important keywords to understand here. The first is that it results in response to chronic rubbing or scratching. So remember that whenever lichen simplex chronicus develops, it usually develops secondary to some other chronic inflammatory condition that causes pruritus or itching and lichen simplex chronicus occurs in response to this chronic rubbing or scratching of the affected area and how does it manifest it manifests by thickened and hyperkeratotic skin so these are the keywords to remember for lichen simplex chronicus thickened and hyperkeratotic skin so what happens that in response to the damage caused by the chronic rubbing or scratching the affected area of skin becomes thickened and hyperkeratotic as a protective response so this is lichen simplex chronicus for microscopic features the keywords to remember are chronic scratching induced inflammation and thickening of epidermis remember that when we studied lichen sclerosis we saw that in lichen sclerosis the inflammatory cells destroy the epidermis so it resulted in thinning of epidermis but in lichen simplex chronicus which is being developed as a protective response it is it results in thickening of epidermis so the first keyword is inflammation you will see leukocytic inflammatory cells infiltrating the dermis and by thickening of epidermis it means that you will see epithelial thickening particularly stratum granulosum you know that skin has multiple layers so these multiple layers will be thickened especially the stratum granulosum layer there will be hyperkeratosis hyperkeratosis means that the keratin layer outside the epithelial cells become increased in width increased in size and you will see increased mitotic activity in basal layer why there is increased mitotic activity obviously because the epidermis is growing and thickening so it will have to proliferate rapidly so you will see increased mitotic activity in basal layers so remember the keywords in lichen simplex chronicus you will see leukocytic inflammatory cells and you will see epithelial thickening hyperkeratosis and increased mitotic activity and how does it appear lichen simplex chronicus also appears as leukoplakia that are white colored patches or plaques and they usually coexist with other vulvar epithelial disorders as i said that lichen simplex chronicus develops in response to itching and scratching of some other epithelial inflammatory lien so you will see other vulvar epithelial lesions in the affected area it may coexist with cancers but itself it does not progress to cancer so just like lichen sclerosis this condition lichen simplex chronicus it's itself benign but can coexist with the cancers so this is all about lichen sclerosis and lichen simplex chronicus.